So whatever religion you follow, you must remember there's God behind it. Because before the Master came down to earth, who has given that Master's existence? So do not ever forget God Almighty, the origin of all things and of your existence as well. In when we pray, normal people, they don't have to be Buddhist or anything, or don't have to know much about Buddha's teachings. We say, Oh God and Buddha, please bless me. Oh God and Buddha know what I'm doing. They mention God also, and the Chinese also. I don't know much about other countries, because I don't speak their language, but I'm sure they would do the same. Okay? So of course your masters are your refuge your reliance for this life. But don't forget your Father, the Almighty God, the Most High, the greatest of all things. Don't forget that. If you forget, you will be very, very unfamiliar children. That's why I ask you to praise God, yeah? Okay? And that's a very powerful praise I taught you. And I do hope that the people out there also implement that so that their life could be better now and their souls will be saved after. Because I also imparted great blessing into these worlds. Okay? And God's gift is to us all and has given me permission to share it with you. So don't forget to praise God, to praise the Son of God, praise all the masters and thank all the noble beings who obey God's will to make your life possible. You see, you need all kinds of noble people, people who walk out on the street risking their lives to investigate cruelty to the animal people, people who go on the street to protest war, risking imprisonment and being beaten up or killed, people who march in all kinds of weather to fight for the animal people's freedom and deserved life on earth. We are in debt to all beings on this planet. Even the animal people teach us to no end unconditional love. I am inside the room alone, but many times my life is saved from spies and all that because I'm involved in war, you know, I uh, provoke anger from the war party people. And I spoke too straightforwardly in some political uh, situations because I have pain for other citizens who are helpless and innocent being harmed by this kind of devil in the form of humans. So they hate me, you know. I have enemies, I don't just have friends. <laughs> I also <laughs> have some unexpected friends, <laughs> like some monk, you know, who say that uh, he is my friend. I never knew him. I don't know his name. I don't know where he's from. I never saw his face in my whole life, for example, like that. Well, it's good to have a friend. Though someone sent me his interview about me on an Alexis YouTube channel, I don't know him at all. I only remember that he wore a very bright multicolor plus multicolor monk precept sashes at the interview. Never have I seen such glamorous, colorful monk sashes in my whole life. At least he's not my enemy. He doesn't proclaim me as his enemy. That's very good already. Though he was not well informed about the truth, of my being uh, in the outer worldly sense as well as my inner spiritual status. You see, just as a primary student cannot understand a university professor is pardonable. But please do not yourself, out of love or admiration for me, attach my name or my work to any of the monks. Uh, because who knows, they might misunderstand, or others might misunderstand and think that I try to use that monk's name to be more famous. I don't want anything to do with anyone who is famous or not famous, anything at all. I work alone with some of your help, that's all.
okay? And all the animal people have the fox people come and tell me, don't open the window today, don't step out of your door today into the back garden even. Because the spies are there, you know, observing you from above. Nowadays, it's easy to observe anyone. Yes. If you suspect they're there, it's so easy. And the bird people come, the fox people come, and even the neighbor's dog person but suddenly. I have a place where the dog person never barks. Only when I'm in danger, then he barks at me. Don't go out in the garden to meditate. Don't go in the shed, because spies are watching. Because I like to be in the shed at night, for example. It's more quiet and alone, you know, away from work and everything. So I can have more peace to meditate. But some days the dog person tells me don't. And some nights I'm already outside the dog person. But, you know, and tells me go back inside now, go back inside now. And the bird people even wake up in the middle of the night, come and quack around. And the fox people go all running over to me to tell me don't stay outside, go back inside. I'm forever in debt to everyone. The farmer, the vegetable, planter, everyone. But I'm still alive today. And all the people who made the natural vegan medicine that I can take, and the doctors who took care of me in the time of a life and death situation before, and the karma was too overwhelming so that my body became affected and I had to have an operation and all that stuff. I'm forever in debt to them, and I pray for them. I thank God for protecting them and liberating them. I do what I can also. Even some of the politicians whom I didn't know before suddenly brought me out like the Honolulu, Hawaii, where before. He uh, praised me and gave me a certificate of honorary citizenship, remember? She also brings love around the world where there is hate. She brings hope where there is despair. And she brings understanding where there is misunderstanding. She is the light of a great person, an angel of mercy for all of us. Yeah, even just that. I was able to have an excuse to bring him to my near realm. I'm so happy about that. So happy. And anyone who has been good to me, though they have not been vegan even, I could take their karma and bring them up to my near realm. Yes. And on my world, dog people. Recently, they reported to me that one of my dog people died. Oh, she was very, very attached to me. <sighs> she was happy, my dog person, formerly. Some of them are my former dog people who came back to protect me for some period of time. And then that dog person was usually together with the other small dog person who one time I brought into the meditation hall. I asked her, are you very sad now because you are alone? You know, her name was Lohu, the one who was dead. When Lohu was alive, if she was sick or something, away, away from you for a while, you were very sad and you didn't let anybody take you out. Only if I could come and take you out. And now she's not there anymore. Are you all right? Are you sad? Because I am sad myself, I told her. And she said, oh, nothing. It's not all lost. Not all lost. Lohu loves you. Lohu loves you. And I can feel her love still. That's what she told me. The little one, the smallest one. They have all kinds of feelings. They're so, so super intelligent and they're so sacred in their ways. They told me many things also, of course. I can't reveal them to you. I'm just in debt and thankful all day long, every day, whenever I can remember. Not just thanking God, but thanking all God's children, God's animal children, everything, everyone, the wild folks, people, even though I'm not allowed to feed them because, you know, if somebody sees it, they will know I'm there. And the Hufa, Dhamma God tells me, don't do it. You will get too much attention. <sighs> Only in one place was I able to rely on one or two disciples to feed the birds, the swan, and the fox people. 
uh, and all the animal people on the water and online, for example, like that. I, I can't do much nowadays anymore. And my adopted bird, bird son, Sonny, he's also gone. But I also have been able to take him to my new room, and I'm very happy about that. All my bird people, my dog people, if they are deceased, I brought them up. Unless they want to hang around a lower level to reincarnate again to see me. But from now, I keep telling them, don't come back. This world is just not good enough for you guys. Please, don't come back. But sometimes they just do it out of love, you know? I'm grateful forever. Uh, saying that, by the way, um, one time someone brought me a special gift and I forgot to thank. Now, I just remember. Uh, some years ago, must be maybe at least uh, five, six years when we still had the center in Montaigne in France. There was one of your sisters. You know her. I don't want to mention her name because I don't want you to swarm around. I know her and you all know her. She's Chinese and she spoke of many of her uh, wondrous experiences about seeing the Buddhas coming to see us when we have a retreat. So you know her very well. And uh, her brother is a monk also having a temple in China. They are both our association members. So not all monks are bad, okay? Please do not think anything. Even the Buddha was crying when that demon told him that in the Dharma ending age, he would send all his children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren to be monks and use the same way, the same road to destroy the Buddha's teachings. So there will be no more Buddhist teachings in the world. The Buddha said to Kashyapa, 700 years after my entering Parinirvana, this Meripapias will spoil my wonderful Dhamma. It is like a hunter donning priestly garb. Meripapias will also act thus. He will present himself in the form of a bhikshu, Bhikshoni, Opasaka, or Opasika. The Mahayana Mahaparinavana Sutra, excerpt from Chapter 9, on Wrong and Right. When Shakyamuni Buddha was about to enter Nirvana, he summoned the demon king and commanded him, You should abide by the rules. Follow the rules from now on. Don't violate them. The demon king replied, So you want me to follow your rules? Fine. During the ending age of your dharma, I will wear your garments, eat your food, and defecate in your arms bowl. His meaning was that he would destroy the dharma from within. When the Buddha heard that, he was worried. He wept and said, There's really nothing I can do about you. Your method is the most poisonous, the most destructive. A commentary by the venerated Master Sun Hua, vegetarian, of the Thinking Sutra, or the Shurangama Sutra, but I do not believe in all that, because nowadays we have techniques, we have computers, we have high-tech, we can restore all these Buddha's sutras. So if you still want to continue to study Buddhist scriptures, then you can have them very easily, or any other religious scriptures. It's very easy nowadays, they are at your fingertips. And I brought many of them to your attention already. I told many Buddhist stories, I explained many Buddhist sutras as well. 